Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with the C64. This is the one I've shown a few times um, of the last week or so. I've been using it for testing out so different PLAs and the, the dual SID board from Dave and uh, Hans's power saver and various other bits and pieces that I've just been tinkering with really. Um, but at the moment, this has got you know working good working MOS. Um, PLA in it. Um, now this behaves, I guess it's important to know, this behaves the same way whether it's got a, you know just a normal single physical SID that works or whether it's got the dual SID. So the dual SID's got nothing to do with this but um, and I did touch upon one part of this I'm going to show you in a sec uh, previously. Um, if you go into the menu here on the 1541 Ultimate um, and navigate through this, can you see what happened there then? Just up top left, uh, sorry just up here, character change, you've got two quotes there and two asterisks, whereas before there were four asterisks. Um, and as you navigate around, weird things like that can happen. It's, it's similar um, to the, the issue experience with the um, what's it, uh, the SD to IEC um, about a week ago um, on this same system. And I put that down to the kernel being revision two. Now I've not swapped the kernel out yet, and that's what I'm going to have go at in a minute. Um, but I'll just show you something else. If I try and load um, something from here, if I go to music folder, if I go to musicians. Uh, see. Did you see a letter change there, just underneath, underneath Tell Shiro and um, I think the something changed to that C there, it's a C E S. So we've got a letter change there, that's weird. Um, and we'll just try and load a track here. See that? Nothing at all, just freezes. Press the menu button, pops up again, press return. And it works. Now it does this an awful lot. It does this an awful lot. I can't find anything wrong with this system. I've um, had various tests and things on here. The RAM seems all alright. The PLA is definitely good. Um, it's got two new CIAs in this because this didn't have CIAs to start with. Um, the power supply is good. The caps are good on this board. Um, it's really weird. I can't understand it at all. So the first thing I'm going to do though is remove this um, this um, Ref2, you can just about see it there, it's Dash02 kernel. Get that socketed up and I've got a few spare kernels so I'm going to try an alternative kernel on this um, and see if that solves it. The other thing is if I switch it back off and on, the other thing you'll notice here, and I don't know if this is a problem with the character rock, um, it could even be Vic, Vic related this, I don't know. Um, because, okay, you can see all the asterisks, let's go into a folder, one's changed already. It's not changed, there you go, changed another, which is really weird. Um, if we're going to um, a folder, just cl pay close attention to the actual fonts. They don't seem too bad at the moment, actually. Let's see if we can go to there. Yeah, let us change in again at the top, look, that's weird. I can't find, oh, there's a good example. Um, just have a look at the top of that P, where it says tap, tap pole. Can you see it looks like we've got, it's hard to, it's hard to see the camera, can you see it just up here, we've got like an extra pixel on top of the P. Um, and if you look down at the M here, sorry, it's not easy to point to, look at this M here, there's an extra pixel on top of the M. Now, I've never seen anything like that before, it's really weird. Um, Something like that, you know, I'd be thinking along the lines of problem with the character ROM. So one, you know, I can't remember which one it is, it's, it must be one of these side ones here, I'm not sure. Um, problem with the character ROM or problem with the Vic. What else can it be, really? Um, I don't think the colour ROM, uh, the colour RAM would cause that problem, C114. Um, so, yeah, just perplexed, absolutely perplexed with this. But my first port of call here, I'm going to socket this. We'll get a different kernel in there, and I'll see if the behaviour of those few little issues there change from changing the kernel. So I've got the new kernel on here, as you can see, it's a Rev3 kernel um, from my spares here. Um, and using the SD to IEC final browser, I'll show you. Previously, if I pressed down, that would have gone all blue. So yeah, there's an issue with that kernel, um, and it just seems a lot more stable now. Um, so I don't, maybe that kernel was on its way out as well, I don't know. Um, but I'll have a bit of a play around, play a few games on it. I'll test out the 1541 Ultimate again and I'll report back in a minute. So this is the following day. You can see the Rev3 um, kernel there. Um, as I've previously shown, that solved the problem with the 
SD to IEC file browser menu issue, you know, with the blue text. You need to look back at a previous video, I forget which one it was now. Um, I'll post some links in the description below to that video where you can see the, the issue with the blue text there. Um, but the other thing with this, uh, you know, I talked about the stability there, so it was a lot more stable. Well, yes, the, the stability was never really an issue. What the issue was, there was a problem with the DMA load. Um, well, I'm assuming it's DMA load. I don't even know the 6502 had DMA capability. I don't think it does. I think it's the DMA in the 1541 Ultimate that uh, sort of pages something um, into a block of memory and then it's just sort of you know swapped out into the 64s memory. I think that's how it works. Um, yeah, don't quote me. But anyway, there's an issue there and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and I've worked out what the solution to that is as well. There's actually nothing wrong with this board. Because th th this particular problem had been bugging me for a, a week or so. So I started testing some of these mods that Dave sent me. And, uh, you know, the, this PLA replacement. That's not it. That's an actual MOS PLA. But the PLA replacement I had in there and the Nano Swids and various other things. This board was just acting a little bit erratically. And I'll show you that in a minute and I'll show you what the fix was. So here you go, I'm going to do this in reverse order. I'm going to show you it's actually working. Um, now you see at the top there, the four asterisks next to 1541 Ultimate. If you watch my previous video, and in fact you'll see evidence of this in a minute, but if you watch the previous video, um, the one on the Jewel Sid from uh, Dave Curran at Time Out Software, you'll see that as you navigate the menu here, you've got weird characters appearing where those four asterisks were. Uh, not asterisks, he's a character from a comic, isn't he? Uh, asterisks. Um, so as you go into different folders and things and navigate, you can see it's stable now. There's nothing at all. Um, now the other issue uh, I was having, you know, coming back to the, the DMA issue, um, if I was to load a tune, let's say, oh, let's go into D, let's load one of Jonathan Dunn's tracks, um, you can see the display's fine, there's no issues, so I've gone to the wrong folder here. There's no issues as I navigate, you know, there's no characters changing as the work and that, that, that of the video. Um, if I select Robocop as return, this what was happening here, there was a 50% chance this wouldn't work. Whereas now, that just works every time. And it would do the same thing just when you went in and out. If I went to a different track, say uh, Operation Wolf, press return. You know, it's, as you can see, it's rock solid. There's no issues with that DMA load at all. It just works every single time. So that's interesting and I'll show you how I fix this and, I, and obviously you'll see the actual error come back when I switch it to, when I change the setting. If we're going to, I think it's Shift F8 is it? No it's not, Shift F1, sorry go back into the menu, Shift F1 to go into the settings of the 1541 Ultimate 2 here and as you go down to C64 and cartridge settings this is where I, I, I went in here straight away thinking maybe there's a setting in here and it's going to be either one of these two that's what my first thought was. Now I changed the that CPU address valid after PHI2, that's related to one of the clocks. I changed that and it, it made a bit of difference. If you increase it, it gets better. If you decrease it, it gets worse. But it wasn't going away completely. So the final thing I did here is disable this PHI2 edge recovery. Um, now when that's disabled, you know, as you can see, there are no issues, you know, up the top of the screen here there's asterisks and stuff and there's no random characters appearing as you navigate, but contrary to that, if I switch that back on, show you, this is, and this is the setting that works fine with all of my other C64s, so I'll shift F8 to exit that, straight away, can you see what's happened up here, um, sorry, trying to get my hand on camera, can you see we've got a double, like a double quote appeared there, and as we navigate, just watch, you'll probably see some, see that then? It says SAD, down on Captain Scarlet, there. And can you see we've got some rogue uh, pixels? Sorry, it's really hard to do this one. There's like some rogue pixels. I'll zoom in a little bit, just so you can have a look. This was the pixel issue I showed earlier. Um, just look on the top of that P of Captain. Um, sorry, trying to get my hand in shot again here. Can you see, it just looks a bit corrupted. It's like there's a few pixels out of place. So, it's interesting, but that... PHI2 clock recovery seems to be what is required on this. You know, you need to disable the edge recovery there. Um, it's really strange. You know, you've got more asterisks as appear, asterisks appeared top left there. Look, one's changed to another quote. It's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. But straight into the menu, sorry, back into the menu, Shift F1 to go into settings, down to C64 cartridge settings. Disable that edge recovery, shift F8, go back out, 
back in again. You can see the, the, the menu's okay now, and there are no issues when you navigate, none at all. And like I say, the DMA load will work every time, whereas it's a 50 50 when that PHI 2 uh, edge recovery is enabled. So I just thought you'd find that interesting. And uh, I, don't, I don't know why, you know, I'd be interested to know. I did do some research online, I couldn't find anything about that setting. But I would be interested to know what bearing that has on the different revisions and things. Why is it required? And I can't help but wonder if it's because this revision, the PLA's up top here, and the timing is ever so slightly different on this C64 versus the other C64s I've got, where the, the PLA is typically where the SID is here, and the SID is where the PLA is. You know, they're, they're, they're inverted in the positions there on the board. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.